anatomical disorders of the reproductive system. And I think that we already gained um, a lot of amazing information during episode one. And this time, we're here again with uh, Jessica and also Zwinder. So how are you guys? Um, it's been so long since the first episode. Hi, Mary. It's nice to be back again with you guys. Hi, Mary. Hello. So, um, so tonight, the topic that we're going to talk about is intersex, free margin, white hyper disease, uh, hypoplasia, and also crypto, crypto kidism. Sorry. So maybe I would like to ask um, Zwindern with our first subtopic, which is intersex. Um, do you have anything to share regarding intersex? maybe the definition or so on? Uh, yes, Mary. I would like to share some information about uh, intersex, uh, which also known as uh, hermaphroditism, uh, which is the failure to share the sex chromosome in males and females with their offspring. And generally in mammals, uh, an XY genotype will cause the induction of the medullary sex cord and a normal functioning testis will develop in the absence of a Y chromosome and result in the presence of XX genotypes. Uh, in the medulla regress uh, and the cortical sex cord are induced. And normal functioning ovaries will develop. Uh, also, there are also two types of hermaphrodites, which are the true hermaphrodites and pseudo hermaphrodites. And in true hermaphrodites, there is presence of both sexes, including ovaries and testicles, in the same individuals. And for the pseudo hermaphrodites, there's only one set of gonads uh, or uh, one set of ovaries. And that's all about the intersex. And how about Jessica? Do you have anything to share with us uh, regarding the free Martin? Yes, Swindon. So, free martin happens when a female is born as a twin with a male and is sterile as a result of exposure to masculinizing hormones produced by the male in cattle and sheep. So, a connection between the two fetal circulatory systems develops early in gestation called uh, the anastomosis. And this leads to the exchange of blood between the fetus. So the exposure to male hormones leads to underdevelopment of the female's reproductive tract. Twinning in cattle usually puts the pregnancy into high risk. And uh, less than 5% of pregnancies in cattle result in twins while uh, 30 to 40 percent result in abortion. Position defects such as arthrogryposis are higher in twins than single calves. The other problem with twins of unlike sex is that the hyphen calf is a free martin. Oh, I see. So how often does this happen to cattle and also sheep? Uh, well, in cows, 92% of male-female twins have free martinism, while in goat or sheep, only 5.5% 5 5 .5 twins are with one male. That's a very high percentage for free martinism in cows. So actually, how do we diagnose free martin in animals? 
Uh, actually, the newborn free martin can sometimes be recognized by its prominent clitoris with an obvious tuft of hair at the inferior commissure of the vulva. Although these signs are not uh, always reliable, but free martins can be identified on the basis of the length of vagina and the absence of cervix. Also, the most accurate method of diagnosis, although not uh, very absolute, is the demonstration of sex chromosome chimerism in cultured lymphocytes. This process is called uh, karyotyping, where blood lymphocytes are cultured and metaphase chromosome spreads are examined for XY cells. Hypercals, which are born co-twins to males and which show morphological changes in the reproductive tracts, invariably show sex chromosome chimerism in blood and also blood forming tissues. So Mary, uh, can you explain about white hyphen disease? Um, I think me and the listeners would like to know uh, info about it. Would you like to explain it to us? Yes, um, Jessica. So I will explain based on what I know. So white hyphen disease is a congenital anomaly associated with the genetics in cattle, characterized by the failure of the malarian duct growth with normal um, ovarian development. So the cattle breeds that can have this genetic disorder are short horns, which is the most common, and uh, Holsteins, Angus, Jersey, Guernseys, and also uh, Eyeshires. And it, it could also occur in swine where the reproductive organs are failed to develop. And this includes the vagina, cervix, uh, body uterine, or coronal artery caused by the hereditary uh, factors. So it is marked by the excessive constriction of the hymen until the vagina canal is blocked. And also the anomalies associated with the of a duct, uterus, cervix, and vagina causing the didelphis, cervix, um, unicorn uterus, and so on. So in cattle, the uh, can be classified into four forms. The first form is when the uterus is having didelphis, um, mucometra unilateral, and having cervical cysts. In the second form, the vaginal cervical uterine development stops, but others are normal. And the third form is uh, the white hyper disease with unicorn uterus and also normal ovaries. And the last one is the white hyper disease with uterus didelphis. So to solve this, in my cases, the uterus can be stretched um, surgically and when this treatment is successful, the fertility is restored. So I think that's all for a white hyper disease. But what interests me the most among these uh, subtopics is the hypoplexia. And what is it? Perhaps uh, Zwinder may have insight about it. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I can share uh, something about the hypoplexia. Um, so hyperplasia is the abnormal growth of one of the ovaries or testes or uh, abnormal growth of the whole ovaries uh, and the testes. Uh, it's not functionable uh, since uh, in the fetus and the ovary normally will be small, thin, uh, hard and sometimes like a cable. Uh, at the end of the ligament. And in order to find out the abnormality, abnormality earlier, uh, examination should be done periodically 
and must be able to distinguish the occurrence of ovarian hypofunction. And hypoplasia normally occurs uh, in the left ovary compared to the right ovary. And when it occurs in both ovaries, it will result in uh, no extra cycle in the individual. And ovarian hyperplasia usually will uh, happen in the autosomal recessive white hair count. And hyperplasia testes uh, mostly will occur in the Swedish highland cattle and short horn. Uh, that's all uh, what I know about hypoplasia. Uh, so Jessica, do you have any idea about cryptokinetism? Yes, Andy. Uh, actually, cryptokinetism is a condition in which uh, both or one testis fail to descend into the bottom of the scrotum as a result of developmental anomalies, mechanical obstruction, or hormone deficiency. Instead, the testis is found at a location along the normal route of testicular uh, descent, and it may have an intra-abdominal, inguinal, suprascrotal, or high scrotal position. So, uh, cryptorchidism was most commonly diagnosed by external palpation of the superficial inguinal rings and by palpation per rectum. Unilateral cryptorchidism appears to be more common than bilateral cryptorchidism. Yep. So you unilateral means one size and bilateral means two size. Uh, yes, you are right. For unilateral cryptorchidism, one of uh, the one in the scrotum may function normally, but uh, these males are not used for breeding programs. Oh, so uh, can we cure the cryptokinetism? Uh, yes, we don't. Uh, an undescended testicle is usually corrected with surgery. The surgeon carefully manipulates the testicle into the scrotum and stitches it into place. So this procedure is called uh, orchiopexy. And it can be done either with a laparoscope or with open surgery. So yeah, that is all from me. All right, so it looks like we have covered the topic that we want to discuss tonight. And it's all very interesting. What an amazing discussion we had. And I gained uh, a lot of information and it's really an eye-opening to know more about the anatomical disorder in reproductive organs. So although it's quite complex. So, okay, um, I would like to thank you to, I would like to say thank you to uh, Zwinder and also Jessica for a wonderful explanation and also insights. So see you guys in the, in the next episode. Good night and thank you. Thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you.